and welcome to another edition of Spotlight. Now, in this one, we have possibly the nicest person in the industry. This woman is absolutely so, so lovely. I'm very proud to introduce Karen Davies. Hello, Karen. Hello, Brendan. Hello. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Good, good, good. Um, Interestingly, I mentioned there about you being one of the nicest people in the business. 15 years ago, you gave up your normal everyday job to take the risk and go into the industry. Do you think being nice played a part in that? Or do you think it was just your sheer drive and determination? Tell us your story. I used to, um, my, my background is health and fitness. So I, I used to run gyms in hotels. Um, and kind of be a kind of mini area manager kind of thing. And I got to the stage where I thought, no, nope, enough's enough. And I loved it, but it was just getting too much. And then I was talking to a friend and he said, why don't you go into the theatre? Because you, you, you like, you know, you like theatre, you like television, you're, art you know, you're kind of fairly artistic and practical. Um, and I said, I don't know how, I've got no background in it, no formal qualifications, nothing. I just have a passion for it. And he said, well, that's fine. So he put me in contact with a technical manager at the Theatre Royal Norwich, or the technical manager at the Theatre Royal Norwich, who very, very kindly took the risk. And I loved it. I was making, you know, asked, told to make things. Um, everybody I met was just so lovely, lots of advice. And it's one of those things where you thought, this is what I want to do. I feel so happy and comfortable here. Came back. Um, I felt a little bit, you know, I shouldn't really be in the gym. I should be somewhere else. And the next year, again, the theatre said, do you want to come back? And my boss at the hotel said, no, you can't go. Um, we looked at the business and uh, we lost too much money whilst you were there, whilst you were away. So, oh, oh, yeah, that's nice to know. But <laughs> and I go, oh, and um, I handed him my notice. How did, how did that make you feel? The heart said, do it. But my head said, you're throwing away, at that time, 21 years service. You're throwing away a pension. You're throwing away, you know, a steady salary, stability, you know, everything for a life that was going to be full of what ifs and am I going to work after this next show and stuff like that. I mean, you know what it's like. But I just knew it was the right thing to do because it was what I wanted to do. I just knew that I was in the place where I felt at home. And 15 years, um. I'm still here and I'm talking to you about it. For, for Doctor Who fans, they will understand the reference I'm about to make because uh, in his memoirs, JNT, Jonathan Turner said, um, you know, to get somebody really good, CVs aren't important. And you are the living embodiment of that, aren't you? It was, <laughs> it was your passion for the industry that got you in it, which makes you kind of unique, right? Well, you, you must be open, you know, listen to the kind of older more experienced members of the crew. They know how to do things. They know how things work in their theatre. They know the best practices, you know. And I've always found that working in theatre, that as I said before, people are always very generous with their knowledge. Um, one thing I was very aware of in the hotels and stuff like that was people were very possessive of, of what they knew. I'm not telling you the secret of how to do this because it makes my position more vulnerable. If you know it, I'm not so important. Whereas in the theatre, it's, I'll show you how to do this. Come on, you know, come with me. You know, you've got five minutes, but I'll show you how to do this properly. I'll show you how to tie this knot. I'll show you how the best way to move this bit of set. And it's just so refreshing. And, it, you know, that, that, that's why I love it. In the first couple of years of you doing the, the, the stage jobs, what would you say were the, were the most important skills that you were learning that you didn't have before? A lot of the stuff is flexibility. You're dealing with especially in, in the theatre, you're dealing with really a, a new show every night. Um, you've got to be prepared to react quickly, um, you know, to kind of pay attention, to be alert all the time, and watch what's going on on stage, be aware of what's happening to you, you know, or around you in the wings. You know, is that bit of set moving? Is it going to be a cast member who wants to come through there in a, in a minute to make his entrance? Why isn't he here? He should be here. You know, he's, he's due to go on and, you know, he's got about 30 seconds before he's due to go on. Where is he? Is he wearing the right costume? I've had that before. You know, has he got the right prop? All this kind of stuff. Does he even know what play he's in? I mean, I've, again, I've, I've had that before. You know, 
when you're doing several, you know, or, you know, that's not the right costume for that scene. You know, you've already been, oh God, okay. You know, so you've, you've got to be ready to react very quickly and you've got to know everybody's job, everything. You've got to be really aware. And it took me a while to kind of pick that skill up to be constantly looking, look, look, look all the time, eyeball this, look at that, listen, you know, and be aware of everybody. And that, that, that was the biggest thing. And also you've got to be a people person. You've got to, but again, I had that because I had the hosp hospitality training in terms of hotels, I was quite good at, well, I'm, I think I'm good at reading people and dealing with people. Um, and also I think another, not, not kind of exaggerating it because I was older than the average ASM or something like that comes in. Um, I was a bit more mature. So I'd kind of, been around the block if, if that's the right kind of thing so I knew how to deal with people um, and, and also because I was older I think I got a little bit more respect from cast members because they saw this kind of person who was on that you no know, probably the same age as them if not older asking them to do something rather than the younger person asking them to do something. Well, tell us about your experience of working with talent and the sorts of skills you need, the diplomacy you need, the sorts of things you would say to talent, the sorts of things you would definitely not say to talent. Um, give us your experience on that. A lot of actors, they're very insecure. They've got a lot of pressure on them. They've got to know their lines, they've got to hit their mark. For some of them, it's their name above the title. They're the ones that put the bum on, bums on seats. So they're, they're under a lot of pressure to get it right every night and to kind of twinkle and stuff like that. So you have to respect that, you know. Um, and then you have to, again, there are some people that, that you can kind of tell quite firmly, you know, you've, you know, you've got to be at this side of the wing, ready to go now. Where, you know, or if they're not, where were you? And there are other people that, you know, you have to say, oh, do you mind? And... You know, so the reason why they are perhaps a little bit on the kind of tetchy side or a little bit demanding is because they know what they want, they know their own standards, and their standards are very high. Well, you, you have to remember that you are a stage manager, you're not a director, you know, so the worst thing, you know, you mustn't, you know, are you really going to do it like that? You know, that's, that's, not, that's not your job, no matter how much you think, my God, you know, your job is not to, to judge performances, you know, anything, you know, how fast somebody's talking, if, if they're projecting, you know, your job is to support them, you know, is, so you, you're really there, is there anything I can get you that will make your job easier? What can I do to make your performance as stress-free as possible? You, you, you are, as, as a stage manager, you, you are often the kind of buffer between the actor and the director. If the, if the actor's getting a hard time from the director, you, you, can, you can kind of come in and put an arm around their shoulder and say, come on, let's go for a cup of coffee or can I get you anything? Or you, know, or you can step in and say, I think we need a break now. You know, so you need to be that kind of two-way communication. You need to be able to see what, what's coming and what's been given out. So you need to be able to read body language. Is the person getting a little bit despondent? Are they getting tired? Are they getting angry? When do you need to say, right, we'll call a break there. Let's go for that. Let, let's, let's have 10 and come back to let, you know, the, the, just kind of let, let the pressure out of the pressure pot if you want kind of thing um you also have to be very good at communicating your kind of um instructions from the director like this is what we need to do you need to come on there we need to have this in we need to have that out we need to speed up a little bit you know we need to have that prop over there that's changed so you need to be able to quickly kind of process what you're being told and give it out in, in, in a form that everybody can understand straight away because rehearsal time is precious I and mean, you, you know you know how, how the top, the, the clock ticks away so quickly, you know, suddenly it's 10 o'clock and right, we're going to go home. We haven't even got to the end of act one yet. You know, <laughs> so you have to be able to say, right, this is this, this is what we're doing. Um, so yeah, and also written, you know, you have to do your show report at the end of the night. You have to be able to take your notes, put them into an understandable thing so that everything is, is in its place and required for the next morning. You've done, you've been lucky actually, you, you've done a lot of, you've done quite a lot of immersive theatre as well, which is different yeah, from that yes. on on stage theatre. Um, tell us yeah. about the differences in managing a project like those two very different techniques. It's like nothing else, I mean it's, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you know, when I first started immersive it was the new kid on the block, nobody really knew how it was going to go or if the public were going to kind of buy into it. Um, I've done a couple of, well I've done of shows with some big companies who, who do immersive. I've done Secret Cinema and I've done Les Enfants Terribles. Um, 
where you kind of you're in you're basically you are in the show the secret cinema it's massive now and you, you you're given characters to play you're told what to wear um it's normally part of a film so the one i did well, two i've done but the biggest i did was um back to the future uh where we basically recreated the whole set of back to the future um on a bit of waste ground of, of the olympic stadium um, we had everything with the clock tower we had all the shops we had the, the green we had the cars a lot and we had about five thousand people come in every night and they were all dressed in character they were all they were all able to go you, know, you, you could go and have a haircut at the barbers you could go and have a meal you could go, oh you could do everything and you and around it you would have scenes being played out from from the film so we'd have marty you know fighting biff we'd have the car chase we'd have the fight in the, in the diner we'd have, we'd have all that we'd have doc swinging from the the clock at the end the, with the road catching fire <laughs> and then everyone would sit down and, and watch the film as is so that took a lot of policing, a lot of communication. You know, you walk, you're actually inside the event. You know, you, you are dressed as well, so, and you're walking around. So you know, and it's all done on time code. A lot of immersive theatre is done on a time code, so you're aware that you know, at six minutes seventy, you know, what six minutes thirty six, so and so has got to come out of that door. He has to come out of that door and do his scene. You know, regardless of what else is happening. So you're constantly looking. Where is he? Where's the audience? Are they safe? You know, we, we had, um, I think, about four or five um, stage managers, and we all had our own little kind of areas. I was in charge of all the car movements. So I had stunt drivers um, doing all, all the stunt driving. I had DeLoreans. I had two DeLorean cars <laughs> screaming around the place. Um, one, of the, one, one of the drivers was one of the ex-Stigs from um, Top Gear. Ah. Uh, another, another the, this, the stunt director was one of the stunt directors from the James Bond films, Tom. He was a mad Australian. Um, and they were they were crazy guys, and you know suddenly there's little me going, you know, oh, can you possibly do that a bit quicker, please? Or like, you know, oh, you know you've got to. But again, you've got to have the confidence because that they they're looking to you to tell them what to do. You know, they they don't know the show. All they've been told to turn up and drive a car. So you've got to say, right, you've got to go stop at the school, come round, pick up Marty. Marty's going to do this, do this. You know, so it's all very much kind of choreographed, and you have to know exactly right at this time that DeLorean is going to come screaming out of, of the lorry. So I make, have to make sure that there's no audience in the way, because you've got 5,000 people milling around. They don't know what's going to happen. So it's all very health and safety, eyes in the back of your head. <laughs> Another feather in your cap is the prop making. So, and you have to, you have to have a real talent for that, don't you? I mean, the things you get kind of, especially for stage, you, you get used to kind of being asked for, for weapons and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's a... I don't know, an axe kind of thing. You can see it very well. Yeah, it's yeah. just foam. It's quite safe, but you know, it'll it'll do the biz. You know, it's it's quite fun and it's safe and you know, it's quite cool. So there's, a, there's a little book, kind of again. It's just a nice soft prop that can be thrown or dropped, and it's you know, it's it's very light. You can do lots of things with it. There's that. Um, what else have we got? Oh, we got we've got a little thing like that again. A little um. Oh wow. Little thing like that again, just kind of again, very you no, know, it's, it's only foam, only foam, but it's light, it's not gonna, you know, cause a, a an actor to kind of get a heavy head or anything like that. It, you know, if it hits, if they turn around and whack somebody with it, it's not gonna, not gonna hurt anybody. And it's easy, you know, just to make. Um, I make puppets, um, what else do I do? I make a little kind of, a little kind of prototype, little kind of cat puppet thing it would have a body and stuff like that so again that's all stuff like that as well as the stage management and prop making I also dress which is again another skill if you're a dresser on on stage you know doing quick changes have to get somebody in and out of a costume in say 30 seconds that that's a skill I also follow spot as well which is brilliant I love follow spotting you can really influence what a scene looks like by by how you use your spotlight. Obviously, you, you're told what to do and you know, kind of what colour to have in and what intensity, but you can still feel the show and you get to know it. You get to know how the actors move and he always crosses the table at this point, so I'll pick him up. And he always goes off slowly, but he does a false exit, so I'll just hold on him for a moment or I'll delay my, my fade off. You know, it, it's, it's just so lovely. A lot of people out there who are watching this that are Doctor Who fans, of course, will know your passion for Doctor Who. Do you reckon, do you reckon your passion for Doctor Who was what fueled the decision way back in 2005? 
but it was um it was colin baker who actually encouraged me to to run away and join the theatre it, it was all colin's fault he, he's my careers advisor um he was the one that put me in contact with with the guy at the theatre royal and he's always been very very encouraging to me and the first panto i did as a with a proper job was with colin he, he was king rat and uh, at norwich and also terry malloy was um was the was he um Fit, alderman fitzwarren so it was it was lovely to kind of start my proper career with colin as you know as, as part of the company which was great so yeah i mean doctor who has has played a massive part in, in my life and in my career i've got to thank it for a lot karen davies thank you so much for being a part of spotlight